The Association of Consecrated Women in Eastern and Central Africa, Aqueca, is a regional body comprising of national associations of sisterhoods from 10 English-speaking countries. The associate member countries include Eritrea, Ethiopia, Kenya, Malawi, Sudan, South Sudan, Tanzania, Uganda, Zambia and Zimbabwe. It coordinates the activities of the religious in these 10 countries and it animates them and empowers the religious towards deeper evangelization in their different ministries. The association organizes periodical plenary assemblies meant to review and evaluate the achievements as guided by the strategic plan. Well, with the theme that we have taken for the assembly, that is reawakening our prophetic role and a call to reformation towards holistic tr transformation in our region, in the Quaker region, I am hoping that within those five years to come, the sisters will have looked at their prophetic role. We got this prophetic role in our baptism, and this is the time to examine and see how prophetic are we in our world today. We have different programs and departments, and all this, they help, they focus on the mission of Aqueca. And these programs include leadership formation, Sisters Branded Value Project, strengthening the capacity of women religious in early childhood development project. We have finance department, uh, we have communication department. The 2017-2022 strategic plan highlighted five key areas which entailed formation and mission, family and youth ministry, justice, peace and integrity of creation, organizational development and growth, and the response to the COVID-19 pandemic. In order to promote the vitality of religious life in the region, Aqueca reaches out to more than 300 congregations through their national associations. For the past three years, Aqueca has achieved a lot in areas of formation and mission through different apostolates. Through our donors, we have been able to support the elderly sisters in the, uh, in the region by providing food staffs, by providing uh, personal protective equipment which they needed during this corona time. Uh, we have been able even to distribute some food to the neighbors who lost their jobs, but they needed bread on the table. So about oh, more than 61 families were supported by a Quaker secretariat. All the Quaker subsidiary bodies embrace formation and leadership to empower the sisters to perform their duties competently. Chemchemi Yawzima trains formators and our formation training of formators is geared towards empowering these women religious with the skills that enable them to take up responsibilities in the initial formation. As an institution, we've been organizing programs and part of it is empowering the formators in the field. And when the formators in the field are empowered, they are renewed they are capacitated and they are given new energy to be able to meet the challenges of uh, experienced in the formation houses, especially in helping our young sisters in the initial formation. We have also taken through the sisters who are preparing for final vows. We have just finished a program. We had 62 of them from different congregations and because it was online, they were able to follow it from different parts of the world. And these sisters have been be able to go through the program. They have been able to have the opportunity to go through counseling, which has also helped them to heal the memories or to heal the past experiences. Our trust in formation is that 
we want to form capacitated religious who are able to carry out Christ's mission in the contemporary world in Zimbabwe. And our objective in formation is that we want to holistically form members who are prophetic, inspirational, motivational, and imitators of Christ. We have also programs lined up for initial and ongoing formation. Currently, we have a novice week that is running for the novices within Harare, Mutare, and Chinoi. And in the month of June, we will run a novice week for the dioceses of Bulawayo, Wange, and Gweru, respectively. And during the course of the year, we will conduct a one-month training for the junior sisters and brothers who are preparing for their perpetual vows, as well as training spiritual directors and retreat givers within the country so that we increase our capacity for holistic formation. Leadership for Mission is a program launched in 2017 with the aim of promoting leadership and strengthening formation. Through this program, we train superiors through three modules. Akweka is committed to its core mission of catalyzing sustainable and scalable solutions to alleviate poverty across the regional congregations participating in Sisters Blended Value Project. We have been able to enroll 18 congregations in the project at different levels. Sisters have been able to start off their social enterprises within their congregations. Sisters are able to use social media, they are able to communicate. So for, for us, this is an achievement at a Quaker. At the moment, sisters have different projects. We have those ones who are running, who are having poultry farming. There are sisters who are in farming, coffee plantation. We have sisters who have gone in for piggery. And also some of the sisters that have tried to put this project of Sisters Blended Value into their schools and they are also engaging the pupils into the project so that they are able to learn the skills that they are able to use in the future. The school ECD program impacts on family units by ensuring that children under the age of two thrive in a sustainable culture of care and support. School ECD is a project that is contributing to the culture of care and support for children aged below two years in the provinces of Eastern, Copper Belt, Ropula, and Central. The project is implemented through the Teresian Sisters, Dominicans, Franciscan Sisters of Assisi, Sisters of Mercy, Franciscan Missionaries of Divine Motherhood, and the Lord's Servants of Mary Immaculate. We experience a lot of impact out there in the community and in the families. The fathers, the mothers are touched in a way that they have that joy of even comparing that their children are different from those who did not uh, come through this program. Children born during the implementation of the project are brighter, healthier, more confident and active compared to their elder siblings. Secondary, mothers understand the importance of breastfeeding and especially during the first six months. This has ensured that children are healthy and their immunity is boosted. The project has been providing behavioral change messages that encourage good nutrition, hygiene and sanitation health-seeking behavior, early childhood stimulation, and male involvement in children's growth and development. We have brought fathers on board because according to our African perspective, we, we are told that, that the work of bringing up children is for mothers. But with this program, we have fathers who are champions and they are able to bring their fellow men to know that part of uh, parenting is their work as fathers. According to our culture, it is very difficult for men to take care of the children. That's our challenge. But little by little, like when we are forming the care groups, it has been noticed that some men, they are able to follow and they are really stimulating their children just to call the baby. Male involvement is critical 
miracle in child growth and development. We have been reaching out to men, encouraging them to be part of their children's growth. This complements the Ministry of Health Corps to pay attention to the first 1,000 days a child's development as they are critical. We have also developed a communication strategy which is being rolled out in various associations and various congregations to ensure that our master trainers out there, our champions, are able to communicate well with their various audiences and especially when they need to work with other uh, stakeholders and especially children, how do they communicate with the children in various ages, from zero age? How do you tell the mother to, hold, to, to handle the child? How does the father handle the child? How do you deal with other stakeholders in the process of communication so that we are able to bring the information at home? The Association of Sisterhoods of Kenya, AOSK, a member organization of Quaker, has had a number of achievements in line with the key areas of the Aqueca 2017 to 2022 blueprint. Uh, in the strategic plan team to uh, infrastructure, we have uh, developed uh, Chemi Chemi Ozima by increasing the conference facilities and the counseling rooms where we've been able to support congregations bringing in the formators, having one on one, those sisters who are tired in the service who come for rest and also for spiritual nourishment. We have uh, helped them uh, at least refresh and go back uh, to the service. We've also uh, brought in uh, new programs like Youth Empowerment, where we support the youth of 15 to 25 years, whom we have continued supporting them uh, psychosocially as uh, the young people who are growing and who are going to be the leaders of uh, tomorrow. We've also strengthened our meal office on the monitoring and office desk, which has been strengthened to support our performance uh, management system. Within this area, we've been able to strengthen and enhance our documentation, uh, bringing out the success stories and also collaborating well with our all stakeholders in terms of follow-up and documenting of our many programs that we are carrying out and the activities. We look forward to launching a new strategic plan which is going to give OSK a milestone in the area of programming, in the area of mission and formation, in the area of uh, family and youth ministry and also justice and peace just among the many programs that we continue bringing in the association. But how has the Catholic care for children in Kenya and the Catholic care for children in Zambia impacted on family and youth ministries? Those KCCK main goal is for holistic family and community-based care and to reduce recourse to institutional care so that children grow up in safe and loving families or communities. EOSK CCK first of all began by creating awareness to all religious men and women and other lay Christians to know that there is need for children to grow up in loving and safe families or communities. We have seen for many years many children being neglected, abandoned and some running to the streets because of conflicts in families. These children end up in sisters institutions or either in rescue centers or children homes or orphanages and we feel there is a need of really empowering sisters to know and learn how they can also professionally care and protect for children. We have Catholic care for children in Zambia, CCZ. Through the pilot facilities, 41 children have been reunited with families in the Lufuanyama and Livingstone. ZAS is working with St. Martin Children Home and Luwase Home respectively. Thus, through CCZ, 
is part of the broader Catholic Care for Children National Initiative promoting the nurturing and care of children in families by working with child care facilities. Ministry of Community Development and Social Services and five other partners that are promoting family-based care in the country, including UNICEF. ZAS is among these partners that are promoting de-institutionalization of children by promoting reintegration effort and push the agenda of family-based care as opposed to institution. Thus, is engaging the religious and the clergy on the need to, to change the model of care of all Catholic affiliated residential child care facilities in the country so that institutional care is only possible as a last resort. Catholic Care for Children in Uganda program was born mainly to transition from institution care towards child growing up in safe, stable and nurturing families or family-like environments. The association also equips youth with the vocational and entrepreneurial training to mold them to be active job creators rather than job seekers. Our young people have been able to obtain trainings in different areas. Firstly, the psychosocial support. These forums were held within the 11 AUs that the program is in being implemented and the young people are able to be taught on various topics that appear to be a, challenged, a challenge to them. These topics included drug and substance abuse, sexuality, youth and technology, parental and youth relationship, teenage pregnancies, among other topics that are crucial to our young people today. Realizing that young people today have no means of income, they have no employment, the SLYI is geared towards supporting our young people to become job creators instead of job seekers. And for this reason, the OSK SLYI invested in training our young people on various topics on entrepreneurship in order to enable them acquire the skills they need for future sustainability. In addition, we are using another program of the youth program, especially in northern Uganda. We have started with youth out of school and uh, these youth are between 15 and 25 years. You know, this is the stage where they are tra transitioning from childhood to adulthood and that period uh, is challenged by making choices. We established uh, some demonstration gardens, for example, uh, of uh, uh, mushroom growing and right now we are harvesting mushrooms. The sisters are reporting to be harvesting mushrooms. The sisters are, repo are reporting to be already processing juices, they are baking, and the youth that are now being trained on hands are already in the program and they are doing very well. So for the family ministry, we have started from the children and youth, and I hope it will work out. In a bid to respond to climate change, ZAS and AOSK have in the past four years sensitized communities on the importance of sustainable utilization and management of natural resources for the benefit of the future generation. Hence, translating Pope Francis encyclical of Laudato Si into tangible programs and interventions aimed at raising critical awareness in conservation of Mother Nature. This program looks forward to a better society and therefore when we talk about identity of creation and justice and peace these are both like intertwined injustices to creation or to nature is an injustice to humanity when ASK was founded uh, justice and peace they couldn't reach to the grassroots 
and thus they trained women peacemakers. And across the 25 dioceses, these women have been champions of injustices, championing these issues, and they too champion the injustices we do to the environment. ASK women peacemakers, they champion a lot about planting trees, keeping our environment clean. The same with our human rights teachers. The human rights teachers are formed clubs in schools where these clubs are very vital. They use these clubs to champion issues of environment. They first begin from where they come from. Each child in these clubs has to plant trees. Every year a tree in their family and a tree in school where they take care of those uh, trees Taking care of them is to champion also to encourage other young people to realize how the next generation can hand over a better environment than the, the environment they were handed on by their parents. And then on integrity of creation, we are dealing so much on a preservation of nature, restoration of nature, sensitizing the, the communities, the religious communities, to begin with what they have. If they are advocating for environmental protection and restoration of nature to begin from the activities we are involved in. There is a lot of tree planting going on. There is a lot of uh, also uh, garbage and sewage management to ensure that uh, there is no pollution. And uh, also we have done these sensitizations and we continue on radios, uh, through workshops, through seminars and other presentations whenever we are called upon. The department that is involved is even sensitizing the priests and other stakeholders to ensure that priests, when they are uh, with Christian communities, they also pass on the message. We are trying to develop also what is called eco-spirituality. Eco-peace projects in schools and institutions and then waste management and control still in schools. Then the last part of a Quaker plenary outcome, again which is part of ARU's uh, a strategic plan was on organizational development. On this one we are, uh, ARU right now is going through an institutional assessment which started a year ago and within that period of four years we have developed policies Policies which have helped us put in place systems to run the association efficiently. The financial department coordinates with other units to ensure effective implementation of different activities. So we have run a number of trainings to provide basic financial management and principle to these key stakeholders that I've talked about. We have also had a successful management of all the donor fundings and as a result we have retained a number of donors. We have also introduced a savings scheme for Quaker because we know that we need to be sustainable as an organization. We have provided mentorship and coaching to a number of associations who their finances were not very strong in, in terms of handling. We have also established a strong donor relationship because of the transparent accountability that we have been providing. With the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, the association also took up the initiative to sensitize members on the pandemic and reached out to the sick and elderly community members in different regions. In response to COVID-19, the association joined effort with the rest of the country. And between 2019 and 2021, it aired radio programs on COVID-19, donated personal protective equipment, PPEs, to vulnerable and marginalized communities. Intervention on measure to mitigate the impact and the spread of COVID-19 are in place to date. I envision that the sisters are going to be signs of hope to our suffering world and especially during this time of COVID pandemic it has led to so many challenges emergency in health 
poverty, loss of jobs, helplessness, the impact it has had on our ministries. So this theme, I think it has come the right time to be signs of hope, prophetic women in our church and in our world, at least to give people hope and not to give up in spite of what COVID is doing and has done to the whole world. All this has been with the support from Hilton Foundation, JHR Foundation, Porticus, Missio, Catholic Relief Services, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Community Development and Social Services, and other like-minded partners that have come on board as stakeholders in the ministries of the association. I would encourage the women religious to really reflect a lot about our religious life, our religious calling, and ask ourselves, are we authentic? Are we living authentic religious life today? How is the contemporary world affecting us? Have we reduced in our witness? Witnessing Christ, witnessing the good news to the people, living the mission of Christ, conforming our lives in the life of Jesus. I think this is what I would like all religious to reflect on and pray for deep conversion so that we become true prophets today by examining our formation, initial and ongoing, and reaching out to the families, to the youth, also working for justice and peace and integration of creation, and also sustainability of our institutes. This is my message for you today. Thank you. Sacramenti ya Ekaristi ni sacramenti ya